Kevin, uh, last time we were here in Miami talking to you, it ended up being a good fight week for you in the end. So I guess how's fight week been and training camp been preparing for Michael Venom Page here uh, in Miami? It's been pretty good. Can't complain. I like it. Miami's cool. Uh, obviously, the last time you prepared for a high-level karate you know, stylistic fighter was Wonderboy. Didn't end up going your way. Did you kind of take anything from that camp that you could bring into this camp to prepare for MVP? Ah, the camp was good. The camp was solid. I didn't have Suge there, so that was a little different. I have Suge at this one. He's a juggernaut. It's always nice to have him there. Uh, I probably took more away from the fight than the camp. Uh, just don't break your hand. <laughs> Um, MVP was in here earlier and he said that uh, your name wasn't one that he thought they would offer you, but when they did, you know, he could feel the, the fans were very excited for this fight. And I'm curious, do you feel that from the fans too, considering how popular MVP was before he came to the UFC and the fact that he's matched up with a high level striker like yourself? Yeah, the fans are pretty happy. Uh, you know, I, I tend to read the comments. They'd have been a little bit more happy with a Wonder Boy fight, which uh, makes a lot of sense, you know, to. Uh, super uh, experienced traditional martial artists with good backgrounds in that traditional martial artist going at it. But they got me, and uh, I think as long as I'm option B, I'm always a good option B for these guys, and uh, that works for me. Well, I was going to bring that up because, you know, he said it's basically just, you know, he has a kung fu background too, and mm -hmm. he's looking forward to, like, you know, two kung fu fighters being in the octagon there. So is that how you're viewing it too? Uh, yeah, everybody's kung fu fighting. I think I said that a while back though. <laughs> he said that... Considering, you know, you're known to talk in the octagon, he's also known to talk when he was fighting in Bellator, and he said it would be the first in-cage podcast in there when you guys are both talking to each other while you're fighting. <laughs> uh, so I guess, what, what's your reaction to that? Uh, yeah, you know, typical big mouth, you know. I always have a casual conversation because that's how you rule the nation, but, uh, you know, we'll see how much talking we do. And I, I am curious, how much did you know about MVP before he signed? Because a lot of fighters, they, they never... Like, when, before your fight with Michael Chiesa, he even said, like, oh, I would love to welcome MVP to the UFC. Were you a fan of his before he signed? Yeah, I was a fan of his before he signed, you know. But if I'm a fan of somebody, I don't want to welcome him anywhere. You know what I mean? It's like, a, unless it's to my house, eat some barbecue or something like that. That sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I watched him before. Yeah, I'm a fan of his work. Yeah. Uh, and definitely. this last one for me. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Cheeto and Sean? Yeah, it's going to be a really good fight. It's going to be an amazing fight. Uh... Cheeto has a really cool coach. Sugar has a really cool coach. Sugar's a really cool guy. Cheeto's a really cool guy. May the best man win. But still here. a sugar show. Sure. Um, you know, are you surprised to see him making the jump over to the UFC at 36? Because it's something that he'd been talking about for quite a few years, but he is doing it relatively late in his career. Yeah, he's definitely doing it later in his career. But, you know, hey, Wonder Boy was old when I fought him and still an experienced vet with uh, plenty of moves up his sleeve. So, you know, maybe the same's here. We'll find out. And then how much extra motivation is it just to play spoiler to that, uh, you know, supposed big debut? Uh, no motivation whatsoever. I'm, you know, I've been gone for a while, so just happy to get back in here. And last one, I asked him about this as well, but initially when this fight kind of broke, it was on the board when Dana was interviewed with the Nelk Boys or something on a board. Was that a date that was ever offered to you or? The, the original date, I was like way back in what, January? January yeah. yeah, you know that was offered to me. You know, I'm a sooner than, I'm a rather sooner than later guy and it um, seems like I'm fighting a little bit later than sooner on this one. And uh, you know, like I, I kind of put online one day, it's a free body. You know, it doesn't really move you anywhere in the rankings, it doesn't really do anything, doesn't give you a bonus or anything like that. It's just a free body. And uh, if you know me, I kind of like free bodies. Thanks. Kevin, right here to your right. Um, you fought Steven Thompson, so obviously you're, you're uh, familiar with the, the kind of karate style, but MVP kind of does those weird things where, you know, he's dancing, he's putting his hands down. I guess kind of what do you make of that, and was there anything different in preparation you had to do to prepare for something like that? Uh, nah, you kind of don't really ever change up anything in preparation when you're fighting a guy like that. You can bring in some karate guys. They're never really going to mimic exactly what you want. Uh, I did hit a Ray Damian, Raymond Daniels, and uh, shout out to him because he, uh, he was like, you know, him and... MVP go back, and he wasn't going to cross that line. So props to him. One hell of a martial artist. Uh, so, nah, no real big changes. <laughs> same old same. If my right hand lands, it lands. If my left hand lands, it lands. In Miami, when my left hand lands, it lands nice, and it lands nasty. And then I still have some other tricks that I can pull out, too. When he does those things, do you feel like it's more of a distraction? Is it more of a mental thing, kind of, to distract his opponent? Or do you feel like there is some actual, like, technique in, involved in setting up his... Yeah, he's been fighting like that for a long time. And usually when he does it, he usually slaps somebody right across the cheeks. So hopefully when he does it, I slap him first. I've been over here. I don't know if you've made it clear about your stance on the belt, but um, I'm curious, on your Instagram, it says, uh, I'll be king before I'm done. So what are you, just, what are you referring towards in, in that say, sentence? You know what? When I wrote that, I was probably selling like, oh, uh, never mind. Let's switch it. <laughs> okay, I'll switch it to a bit of a more fun one. You mentioned Kung Fu fighting. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 drops while you're here. Are you going to make time for that one? Uh, no, no. I'll probably wait until I get home, watch it with the kids.
Awesome. And one last one. Uh, your good friend Jamal Hill, he's headlining UFC 300 yeah. on the next pay-per-view. So what was your reaction to, uh, when you saw that he was going to headline against Alex Pereira? Oh, man. Yeah. It's, you know, anytime you fight Alex Pereira, I'm like, oh, shit. So instantly called him was like, bro, right off the surgery. That's fucking wild. He's like, yeah. I'm like, man, my kind of guy. Let's go get it. Do your thing, brother. You guys go out there and have fun. So props to Jamal Hill is going to go out there and hopefully grab another world title. And I think that'd be fucking amazing because uh, I don't think he got a chance to show you guys what he could really do last time when he grabbed that belt. So it'd be great to see him going to run. I like to have one more, but um, ever since you've made your way into the UFC, you've kind of become a fan favorite in every single place you go to, every arena. It seems like you get a good roar. So what do you make yeah. of that? Is that something you even care about? I mean, the fans appreciate it. Oh, yeah, of course. I definitely care about that. Uh, it's better be loved than hated, right? And they say uh, you collect more uh, bees with honey or something like that than vinegar. So, yeah, it's always great to have people to like you, and it's always great to be loved. You know, nobody wants to be hated and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think it's freaking amazing to be able to go places and to put smiles on faces instead of frowns on faces. So hopefully Saturday night we put the biggest smile of them all. Kevin, one more right here. Uh, usually when fighters face someone with a big following internationally, their fellow countrymen will kind of, you know, go after the opponent. So I'm curious, has the UK fans been kind to you at all leading into this fight? Because they can be pretty vocal when you're fighting their favorite fighters. Yeah, you know what? Uh, when I was fighting uh, some of these other guys from different places, you know, they, they tend to come pretty hard. But kind of like my man over here said, I've kind of got a good relationship with everybody. And, uh, no, nah, they've been pretty nice. And, I think they know this boy's been living in Texas for a long time, and he shouldn't have a problem catching a snake. Appreciate you guys.